Right, welcome everybody to um, the practical demonstration. Um, what we're going to show you this afternoon is uh, a vacuum RTM or RTM light as it's known, closed moulding process. Um, it's an out of autoclave process and it can be used for quite simple things like uh, the sledge we're going to do a demonstration of here, uh, up to fairly high volume fraction, low void content, uh, carbon, uh, structural components. So the process can be used in a pretty wide range of, uh, uh, of components. In this case, we're using uh, a relatively lightweight uh, vinyl ester high temperature composite tool. They can be heated as well. We often use water heating, um, but it can also work in metal tooling. Typically we'd use aluminum tooling for, for um, high production rate or high accuracy components. So we've got a, a basic um, a surface tool. What we've done this morning to avoid you all sort of inhaling fumes and seeing the messy bit is apply a, a gel coat to it. So there's a gel coat surface on there, which can be used in the process for aesthetics and doesn't have to be used. And we're using a, a, a combination fabric. Again, fairly low volume fraction in this, and combination fabrics are designed to give us a defined thickness of uh, component. So this, this material I think is a 450 gram chop strand mat, either side of 180 gram, uh, I think this is a polyethylene core, something like that, or a nylon core. And when sort of compressed by the top tool under vacuum, that'll, that'll retain a thickness of, in this case, for most of this product, around three mil. Um, in a certain area of this product, we've actually built into a thicker area at about 6 mil to demonstrate the use of core materials. So this is a very simple core material called SORIC. Uh, it's quite flexible, doesn't absorb much resin, absorbs about 50% resin, so it's reducing uh, the resin usage in that area and another bit of combination fabric on top to build that up to 6 millimetres. And again we could put into that biaxials multi-axials or unidirectionals, we could add that all into the mix as long as we have sufficient cavity thickness to get that combination of fabrics into the product. What we're going to do, we're going to close the tool up and I'll show you the top half of the tool as, as my beautiful assistant helps me uh, lift it into place. Um, we've got an injection machine here, so the, the whole aim of this process is to be a closed mould, clean, uh, production based process. And what the machine does is takes resin from store, in this case we've just got a 25 kilo keg on the back, and catalyst from its store, which is a standard 25 kilo catalyst container, and it mixes the two components in the correct ratio, it pumps them around the system up to a mix head here, and when the appropriate time comes we, that injects into the mould, the mixed in a static shear mixer at this point, and as they go into the mould, we control the flow rate and the pressure of that material going into the tool. And that, that's really important we control that because we're actually holding this tool closed with vacuum. We're not actually going to mechanically clamp it as such, even though you can see some little toggle clamps on here. They're basically just to get the seals into contact in the first place. And once those are into place, the vacuum will hold the tool shut. And I think probably Steve said a bit about the process and how it worked in his presentation. So the other bit of kit you can see we have in the corner is uh, a vacuum pump. And it's, it's basically the opposite of a, a standard compressor in the workshop. So there's a little vacuum pump and a reservoir and the vacuum pump switches on and off until the reservoir is at the appropriate vacuum level. So we have a permanent store of vacuum in there and the little control box just takes care of topping it up as we use it. Everybody okay with that so far? Any questions? If anybody's got any questions, just fire them at, with, at me as we go along. If what we we're going to do, because the timing here, we're going to get this shut and injected, and then you're going to go and look at a couple of other things. In the meantime... If we just turn this on its back a second. So what, what you can see on um, this tool, you can see we've got two seals here. The outer one is our vacuum seal, to prevent air getting into um, the tool and the inner one is a resin seal to prevent resin getting out. So those two perform an important job. The gap between them is where we pull as much vacuum as the system has available and that's our actual clamping force to hold the two halves of the tool together and at the correct thickness. 
We also have a vacuum in the tool surface. It improves, um, improves wet out, helps with the injection, uh, but also that helps hold the cavity at the correct thickness. And the balance we have to get is the vacuum level we're putting into that cavity is the correct vacuum to compress that fiber pack to the desired design thickness. Okay. Let me close that up. Okay. Valve you can see here is just a clean method of connecting an injection machine to a mould. As in production as well, it lets us be fairly efficient that we generally would have one machine with lots of different moulds. So what we want to, want to be able to do is come along, connect the machine up to the mould, inject it, and while that's still liquid and curing, disconnect the machine, take it away and go inject another one to try and make the machine as efficient as possible really. And so this valve allows us to inject the mould, clean the whole system through and then disconnect the machine while we've still got liquid resin curing in the tool. So what I'm actually going to connect a couple of little bits. This is just the uh, waste. So when we do the final flush, I think actually that'll be okay. What you'll see is that the waste material, which is about 50 cc's of resin and about 50 cc's of solvent, so it's not a great deal of waste materials, they'll go through that pipe into this waste drum. And we're using an air bench here, it's an activated charcoal air bench, just to take the, any fumes away that, that come out of the system. So what I'm going to do is connect up our mix head, so we'll make a resin connection. Obviously, we do want that to go in the mould and not all over the floor. I don't think the university would appreciate it. And we make a control connection, which is just a pneumatic pipe, which tells this valve when to open. So the, the machine will actually control when this valve opens and closes. When we inject the mould, we're aiming to have as little waste material as possible, but we have to accept that there will be a little bit, maybe 50 or 100 cc's. So we're gonna put this catch pot in at the final point of fill of the tool. So we're using peripheral injection, we're going to inject at this point, it'll run right around the tool and finish, providing we've got the tool design right, at this point. And so we're going to connect our vacuum, or our cavity vacuum, to that point. And then we also have to supply the vacuum between the two seal surfaces, so we connect a vacuum to that area. And what you'll see when Steve turns the uh, vacuums on, you should actually see this tool close up a little bit. There we go. And what you'll find now is say uh, these clamps aren't actually required at all. They're actually loose. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's okay. Okay. Now what you might want to do, if actually some of you gather round a bit, because you, you'll actually be able to see, we've made the top of this tool a bit see-through, and you'll be able to see the resin flow inside the tool. We've put a very small amount of pigment in the resin. Yeah, it must be no, no, you're all right. <laughs> you wouldn't normally inject blue resin on the back of a white gel. Just check out. Just to make it a little bit clearer to see. Now, because the machine's been sat here for a couple of hours doing nothing, we can just re do a quick recirculation on the machine, and all we're doing is pumping materials, resin and catalyst, from each of their respective stores up to the mix head, and they're just going back then to their respective stores. And that just means any air bubbles or anything that's happened to that material while it's just been sitting there doing nothing for a couple of hours just gets pumped through the system, make sure we've got no air bubbles or anything like that. And I'm just going to put a quantity of resin into this tool, which is 1.8 litres. I think so. Yeah. So I just program into the machine, I want 1.8 litres. What I'm going to set is a maximum injection pressure of half a bar. So the machine is going to control its rate of flow and the pressure so that we don't actually overcome the vacuum holding that tool shut. So it'll optimise the machine, we'll see a variable speed 
of supply of resin to make sure that we stick to our half bar injection pressure. Okay. So the machine's starting, it starts its sequence, so we can see the valves open now. And what some of you should start to see is a flow of resin into the tool. And perhaps some of you are a bit cl closer can hear the machine sort of ticking away a little bit and what that's doing is controlling the speed to maintain that half bar injection pressure. So it's a continuously variable process. That takes account of the different resistance of the fabrics you've got in there or any in mold variation, viscosity variation on the resin, those sort of things. It is going to be 1.8. So my, my 1.8 was a little bit ambitious. It's been a while since I've injected this tool, but uh, I've stopped around 1.6. You see, we're just getting a little bit of on flow and we're aiming to have as little waste material come into the catch pot as possible. So that injection's finished. Normally, if it, if it had reached its 1.8, um, the machine would have stopped automatically, but I'm just gonna complete that. And you can see the machine's closed that valve now, so we have a, an isolation of the uh, tool. As what we've got in the system is mixed resin now from these, this point here right through to that valve. So we have to clean, clean that out or it'll cure in there as well. I'm going to just flush the material. And the machine uses a three-stage process, so it uses just compressed air to start with to blow down through and try and blow out any resin. You should finish that in about 10 seconds. And what happens now, the machine's got a little non-pressurized store of solvent on board. It can be acetone, which tends to be the most common in the composites industry, but uh, we have a lot of customers working with the water-based or non-flammable based solvents, which are becoming more and more um, sort of required generally because of health and safety considerations in industry. Um, so all the equipment works quite well with, with the non-flammable based solvents. Uh, so it loads, it's actually, it is actually uh, just loading into uh, a chamber a small amount of solvent loads in around 50 cc's and then we should see again with a mixture of compressed air and solvent it'll just blast that clean. So the whole cleaning cycle ends up being about 45 seconds to a minute, something in that region. 